Hello and welcome to this tutorial module. These tutorials are presented to you by Paradigm. Additional tutorials can be viewed by going to our website, ParadigmTraining.com. This is the first module in a series of tutorials on energy options. In this module, Understanding Optionality, as well as in all the others in the series, the options I will be discussing are not the kind that deal with equities, currencies, or the like. Educational materials on financial options are abundant, but not so for options in the energy sector, whose structure, pricing, and application strategies are materially different in many aspects. This tutorial series will explore optionality from this energy-specific vantage. My name is Frank, and I'll be your guide. Remember, you are in control, and you're encouraged to stop the video, rewind, and replay sections as often as necessary. Options have a reputation for being complex and mathematically abstract, but I intend to show you that this isn't rocket science. An effective working understanding of options can be had without all that calculus and quantitative mumbo-jumbo. In this opening segment, we'll see that in the energy business, the option concept extends beyond the conventional put and call. In energy, we deal with so-called real options. An option we'll see doesn't only take the form of the right to buy or the right to sell. An option is any position with an asymmetrical payout, something very common in the energy business. This asymmetry increases the odds of making a profit, and therein lies the value of an option. The importance of options extends far beyond the trading room. For many energy players, traded option positions account for but a small portion of their total optionality. The bulk of their option positions are embedded in energy supply contracts, but more significantly in their assets and operations, generation, storage, pipelines, tankers, refineries, and more. An option is not accurately defined by the right to buy or the right to sell. That description is too limiting, especially in the energy business. So then, what is an option? An option is an operating flexibility that allows you to choose between two alternatives. Choose A or choose B. These are called real options. A real option most everyone is familiar with can be seen in an airline ticket. Let's say you've purchased a ticket on a flight to the Caribbean departing in August, but for some reason you'd prefer to travel in September. Can you? Depends on the type of ticket you bought. No go with a restricted fare ticket, not without heavy penalties, but the more expensive full fare ticket will allow you to change. Essentially, by buying the restricted ticket, you own transportation, nothing more. But by buying the full fare ticket, you own both transportation and a real option that allows you to change your travel dates or cancel travel altogether. So this is the real option. Choose August travel, September travel, or some other date. Industrial companies enjoy multitudes of real options in their business operations. For example, schedule workers for a day shift or schedule workers for a night shift. Management's flexibility in scheduling its workforce is key to productivity and efficiency. Labor contracts and government regulations can limit that flexibility. It is in management's interest to preserve their flexibility as it has real option value. Develop land for oil production or develop that same property as an industrial park. Any asset that has dual or alternative uses has real option value. Expand capacity at an existing plant or buy or build another plant. A plant having the infrastructure that allows for expansion provides real option value to a company. Now these are examples of real options, but these options will be exercised. That is to say, the choice between A and B will be made for reasons other than price. These are indeed real options, but are beyond the scope of the type of optionality we are discussing here. Our focus here is on real options in the energy sector in which the decision to exercise, that is to choose A or B, will be based on a market price. Examples include transport coal by train or transport coal by barge, ship an LNG cargo to Europe or divert that cargo and send it to Japan, buy Texas gas and then ship it to Chicago or simply to buy gas in Chicago. 
ramp up and generate power or shut down the generator and buy wholesale power. But regardless of what form a price-based option takes, be it an explicit put or call option contract, or an option embedded in a supply contract, or as a real option in business operations, they'll all have this one common characteristic. A plot of its payout will be asymmetrical. So what the heck is this thing, this asymmetrical payout? Let's see if we can get a grasp of risk symmetries and asymmetries. It's actually pretty straightforward. This chart will map the payout of our risk position. What we want to know here is that for our risk position, do we earn or lose money at these varying market prices and, of course, how much? The vertical axis shows us how much. So let's say we bought power at a fixed price of $50. If the market price doesn't change, stays at 50, our position breaks even. If the market price rises to 55, we can now sell the power purchased at 50 for a $5 profit. At 60, the profit would now be 10. At 45, on the other hand, we would now be selling at a $5 loss. And at 40, we would now be losing 10. If we connect the dots, we see the payout structure is a straight line with a break-even at the purchase price of 50. Now, market theory tells us that there is an equal probability of prices rising and falling. That's a 50-50 chance. This implies that there is an equal chance of earning $5 as losing $5. The risk is symmetrical. Like flipping a coin, there is an equal chance of winning and losing the expected payout of this game would be zero. How would this be different if the payout was asymmetrical? Asymmetrical is just a fancy way of saying the line's not straight. It has a kink in it. But something interesting has happened. Now if prices rise $5 to 55, the profit is up to 10, while a $5 decline to 45 still only loses 5. Keep in mind that there remains an equal probability of prices rising 5 and falling 5. So now, because of this asymmetry, we have an equal chance of earning 10 as losing 5. Expected earnings are now bigger than expected losses, so the expected payout is no longer zero. The expected value of this risk position will be a profit. This means if we were to hold this risk position over and over again many times, we would lose half the time and win half the time. But because the winnings will exceed the losses, on average we would be sure to earn a profit. Therefore, we should be willing to pay to get this profitable asymmetric risk position. Expressed more concisely, we pay a premium to buy the option. But there's another kind of asymmetry. In this asymmetry, a $5 price rise results in earnings of only $250, while a $5 fall in prices still loses the full five. The odds are now unfavorable as there is now an equal chance of earning $250 as losing five. Expected losses now are bigger than expected gains, and therefore the expected payout of this asymmetry is a loss. Because of this expected loss, we would not want to take on this risk position. That is, unless we're paid something to compensate us for this expected loss. Our compensation will come in the form of the receipt of an option premium. In this case, the asymmetry gave us unfavorable odds. This means we have sold the option, and therefore will be paid the premium. Now, let's apply these concepts in a practical example of an option embedded in existing business operations. Remember, we're looking for payout asymmetries as indications of embedded options. In this example, let's consider a regulated utility who owns no generation, but so it buys power at market index, but it is required by regulators to sell power to its customers at a fixed price of $60 per megawatt hour. Current wholesale power price is also $60. The utility sells power at a fixed price of $60 and sources the power paying the index price. If the index is also 60 the utility will break even. If the index rises to $90, selling at 60 and buying at 90 generates a $30 loss. If index falls to 30 selling at 60 and buying at 30 produces a $30 profit. 
Connecting the dots, we again have a straight downward sloping line. This is symmetrical risk. So at this point, there is no indication of an option. But regulators add a provision to the utilities tariff. If market index prices fall below $60, regulators will require the utility to pass 50% of its profits in the form of reduced prices to the consumer. This provision will have an effect on the payout structure. If prices fall from 60 to 45, normally there would be a $15 profit. However, since half that gain must be passed along to the customer, the utility only realizes half of it, leaving it with a profit of only $750. If prices fall to 30 instead of a $30 gain, the gain is half of that at $15. By connecting the dots, we now observe an asymmetry telling us that there is an option in the structure. The next question should be, is the option owned or sold? We can learn this by seeing whether the symmetry provides favorable or unfavorable odds. In this case, the utility gets dollar for dollar losses as prices rise, but realizes only 50% of the gains when prices fall. These are not favorable odds. Utility has sold, or as traders might put it, is short the option. In summary, a real option allows you to choose between two or more alternatives. All price-based options are characterized by their asymmetrical payouts. These asymmetries alter the odds which now can be favorable or unfavorable. If the asymmetry creates favorable odds, we would expect profits, and so we would be willing to pay the premium to buy the option. If the odds are unfavorable, we would expect losses. We would need to earn a premium to take on the risk position. We are selling the option. In the module that follows, we will put some numbers on these concepts, actually quantifying option value. The asymmetrical payouts result in either expected gains or expected losses. We will actually calculate that by introducing the concept of volatility, and we'll see how price dispersion determines option premiums. Energy Options 1 is the first in a progressive series of three tutorial programs. All three address the topic from a practical, non-technical perspective. Or more simply, what do you need to know to make money? Beyond Options, Paradigm offers training programs in a wide array of risk management topics. All are focused on the unique aspects of managing risk in the energy sector. We invite you to our website to view more modules and to learn more about Paradigm's online tutorials and classroom training programs. Thank you.